So I'm in Colorado and I was talking with a friend of mine who actually I met through the store. Uh, she started out as a customer, now she's a friend and she's been kind enough to let me stay with her for the past month or so. And we got to talking and she said, hey, you know what an interesting video would be is if you went to a sp like sporting goods stores around the country, just to see if you can find any of the gear that you'd need in Pulaski at stores that obviously aren't local and wouldn't typically carry stuff like that. So I thought that was a great idea and I'm on my way to the store right now to see how close I can get to Pulaski gear. Okay, so I came prepared with a list. Uh, this is the basics of everything you would need to get started I, for a day on the river in Pulaski. The ones I circled in purple are what I think is going to be the hardest to find here, um, but it's like the fishing sections over there, so let's give it a try. Okay, I got excited for a second. I thought I was gonna find what I was looking for right away. Um, let me see here. So I found this Shakespeare ugly stick uh, with a reel, but I thought that was gonna be what I need. Once I pull it down and got a closer look, it's only seven feet long, so that's not gonna be what I'm looking for. Okay, so one thing to keep an eye out for, unless you plan on using a bait caster, which I do not recommend, is make sure you look for ones that don't have the trigger handle like this. These are for bait casting reels, and predominantly we're gonna be using uh, open face spin reels or fly reels if you're using a fly reel combo. So stay away from those. Okay, so kind of the problem I thought I was going to have, which is I really couldn't find anything for the spin rods. Um, the closest I found was actually the first one I picked up, which was the seven foot Ugly Stick uh, GX2. I mean, that's about as close as you can get um, for what they had here, but you really want at least eight and a half feet. So that still isn't gonna work, but I'm gonna try the fly section now and see how close we can get for fly rods. Okay, here we go. This got me excited to see the Douglas rods. Um, those typically are really good for what we're doing. Let's just see if they have anything in the length and weight that I'm looking for, particularly in a two-piece. Uh, Four-piece rods do not hold up as well on the river. As I've talked about before, every break in the rod for the different pieces is a weak point, so I try to stick to two-piece, but I don't think I'm going to be able to find that here, so we'll see. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we have an Orbis Clearwater nine foot nine weight. It is a four piece, but so far this is the only thing that's like right on par for what I'm looking for. In a nine or 10 weight, I'd feel a little better about that being a four piece than I would with an eight or seven weight. So for this, we're looking at $249 retail just for the rod. Let's keep looking. Okay, so I just found this combo. It's a Cabela's Bighorn nine foot eight weight. Again, it's a four piece, which makes me a little hesitant, but it's a rod and reel combo, um, comes with line loaded up on it. It doesn't really say if it's weight forward line, floating line or what, but let me see. Comes out at $99.99 for the whole combo. So overall, not a bad deal. Okay, so for a four piece rod, might have a winner here. Um, so it looks like it's a, called a Cabela's Cinch, nine foot 10 weight. It is a four piece, but which is why I'm looking at the, the 10 weight there, just to accommodate the fact that a four piece rod is going to be weaker than a two piece rod. So it looks like this one is $119.99. Okay, so I think that's about as good as we're gonna get for the rods. Um, there were a few okay options for the fly rods here, not really anything for the spin. Um, I think the ugly stick that I was looking at, the rod and reel combo was about $60, but I'll go back and check that. And then obviously the ones here for the fly rods varied, but now let's see what we can do to find a reel. This I think is gonna be a lot easier. Okay, just like I thought for the fly reels, 
Um, I had no problem finding anything that would work for the river. I mean, there's a really good selection here. So you've got everything from sage reels um, down to some of the cheaper Cabela's ones. But I think right now the most bang for your buck that you're probably going to get that I've heard a lot of great things about, hopefully I'll have in the store next year, is going to be the Reddington Behemoth. I've heard a lot of good stuff about them. You can tell, I mean, you can kind of see how they're, uh, the way the spool is concave, that they can hold a lot of backing on them. From what I can tell, they're a great reel, but there's stuff here that varies from, you know, something like this, it's $90 all the way up to the $400 reel that I just showed you. So there are a lot of good options. Just make sure that you're getting a reel that's comparable to the size of your rod. You wanna be able to get at least 100 yards of backing on there. Okay, so same thing with the fly reels. I walked over to the spin reels and found something that would work immediately. So the most important thing you're going to look for in a spin reel is that, so this is uh, 10 bearings. You want, I would say at least five ball bearing system. That's just my preference to make sure it doesn't blow up when you get a big king on. But if we come down here, let me see. So this is one of my best selling reels in the store, the Fluger President XT. Um, that's the 40 series you'd be looking for. I wouldn't go any smaller than a 35 series for salmon fishing, so something like that is perfect. That's coming in at $99.99, which is not a bad price at all. Um, let me see. Down here again, the Quantum Throttle. I know I sold a lot of those last year. Um, even though this is a, a 30 series, as you can see right there, it does hold quite a bit of line. So the main thing you're looking for, you can usually check on the spools, is that uh, you want to be able to get, I would say, minimum 150 yards of 10 pound test on there, maybe eight, depending on what you're using. But I mean, I'm just looking all over here and there's a ton of really good options. So I don't think finding a spin reel is going to be a problem if you just stick to make sure it's at least a 35 or sometimes I'll call it 3500 series and at least five ball bearings. Okay, next on the list, we're gonna go take a look at waders. I don't think this is going to be a problem, but let's see what they have. Okay, I was gonna start with the least expensive I could find, but I think I'm gonna start right here. I treated myself last year to a pair of the Corker Dark Horses with the interchangeable bottoms. And honestly, it's not a decision that I regret at all. It has the boat lacing system. Uh, they're really light. They've got the um, drains right there. So when you pick your feet up, the water drains out so they're not as heavy. They have them for $210 right now. I think I paid less than that, but the way prices are going up with things right now, I'm uh, not really sure. I mean, these could have gone up a lot, but for me personally, that was the best decision that I've made as far as wading boots. Okay, here. So on the other end of that, something like this would work just fine. Um, for me, though, what I found is I always have at least felt, and then these do have all the little spots in them that you can also add like screws or studs to help increase your grip. But I personally have found that something like a plain rubber bottom boo. I just slide too much and it's not something I can use. I wouldn't personally recommend it, but it looks like you can find, you know, decent boots here for $63. Um, so that would be something you would have to use with a stocking system, um, which is just, you know, the waders that come, they don't have the boots attached to them. That would be boot foot waders. So stocking foots are the ones that just have like the neoprene at the bottom, then you would get the boots separately. Uh, the cheaper option of the two is going to be to get uh, boot foot waders that have the boots attached. I find personally they're not as comfortable um, and sizing is kind of weird. That's pretty much like a one size fits all. You just have to find the right boot size. But still, if you just want to get in the river and get going, that's going to be a cheap option to go. So let's see what they have for that. Okay, here we go. So looks like for $89.99, you can get rubber chest waders uh, with the boots built in. You'd be looking for you to fit it in a for your foot size so oops um someone that requires a stout waiter which would mean basically more room around the middle you might not have as many options when you're looking um 
in the boot foot waders as you would with the stocking foot waders. The other thing I would draw attention to is sometimes in these it can be harder to find felt bottoms. I haven't been able to find any here so far, um, but there are a good amount of options in potentially adding your own spikes to the bottom of the um, rubber bottom waders would be an option as long as they're not so long that they go through and puncture through to your foot. Okay, so as far as a way to store your gear when you're on the river, like to put um, everything in to have it accessible when you need it, I see people come with the big tackle boxes that you, you know, kind of carry around like a briefcase and open up. I wouldn't recommend those just because you really do want to bring your gear out with you when you're standing in the river, just so it's easily accessible. And you can't really do that with a bigger tackle box. You kind of have to leave it on the bank. And unfortunately, stuff gets stolen so frequently. If you don't have your eye on it, it's really hard for me to recommend carrying a big tackle box like that because you would risk getting it stolen and you can't really get to it as easily. So what I would recommend instead is like a fly vest with a lot of pockets, a little tackle box that you can keep right in your waders, or what I'm gonna show you now, some of those like um, over the shoulder sling backpacks. So something like this is what I'm talking about, that like single strap over the shoulder, you can uh, keep it in front of you when you need it and then just kind of throw it over your back when you don't. It has different pockets and things in it and it's easy to keep right on your person. Um, this one's $50. Also, just a basic fanny pack. Um, something you know like this or even like i wear something like this as an alternative to a purse that would be fine to keep your stuff in just anything you really can to uh bring your gear out with you because it is such basic gear you don't need a, a ton of stuff but something like that would be great as well um that's 70 dollars there you go honestly Something like this is perfect. Um, you could easily keep some different size split shots in here, hooks, rubber bait, and that's pretty much all you need. I mean, if you wanted to keep leader and stuff on you, but as far as your basic tackle, a small box like this would do you just fine. Okay, so I thought hooks were gonna be hard to find. Honestly, I came over here. So these Bass Pro Shop series octopus hooks, I mean, obviously, I haven't tried them. It's, it's hard to tell just by looking at the thickness of the wire exactly. Like, if it's a 2X, you do want at least a 2X. This doesn't say that it is, but, I mean, from the look of them, they're not bad. So, I, I mean, it's $4.99 for a 25-pack. I think it would at least be worth a try. The worst that happens is they bend out and you have to use them for another type of fishing. But let's keep looking and see if I can find anything that's exactly what we use in Blast Guy. Okay, boom, perfect, right here. Um, these owners, the SSW with the super needle point, this is exactly what we're using a lot in Blast Guy. Um, highly recommend these, they're super sharp, great hook, and I found them here. So this is something you definitely wanna keep your eye out for. Okay, so right here, it's pretty much exactly what you're looking for, would be split shot with little tails on the back, the removable ones, so that you can add and subtract as necessary if you need more or less weight. These are size zero. Um, typically we're using bigger sizes like twos, fours, things like that. The only thing is these are very small packs, honestly. You would go through, I mean, how many pieces are in here? 14 pieces. So you would go through these in, I mean, you could go through them in under an hour, honestly, depending on if you find a snag or not. So even though these are lead, which is great, you can use lead in Plasky, we just can't sell it under a half an ounce per single unit. They are good to use, but this is, um, I mean, you would need uh, like every pack they had here to get you through a couple days. So that would be the only thing is I wish they had them in bigger packs. Um, but I mean, other than that, these are pretty much what you're looking for. All right, moving on. Some of this wasn't as hard to find as I thought it would be. Surprisingly, I found some hooks and split shot that would work fairly easily. So now I think let's move on to bait and see what they have for that, bait and line. So I'm gonna start out in soft plastic aisles just because that is one of the more popular baits that we use a lot. Um, most of the ones I'm looking at right now are, you know, some of the bigger ones. That's not anything we would use. I'm looking more for like trout worm size or like the small eight mil 
eggs. Uh, I'm not finding anything quite yet, but let me keep looking and see what I come up with. Okay, so not as much for salmon, but later in the season for steelhead, this exact one right here, the power bait, three inch trout worms in the bubblegum color are absolutely killer for the steelhead, but not quite for the salmon. So I'm gonna keep looking and see if I can get closer to what we need. Okay, bingo right here. This is probably the most common bait that I sell. It's gonna be something just like this. These Mad River eggs, they're a colored soft plastic um, and they have them here. This is exactly what I sell in the store. Same price too, so that's uh, definitely a good thing to look out for. I mean, I'll have it available. They don't have chartreuse, which I is one of my favorite colors, but um, either one of these, the red or the orange would also be great. All right, moving on to line. No, the red label, I don't like that. Stick with the Invisix right here. We use this more for steelhead fishing just because they're more finicky and line shy because it is a little more expensive. But if you did want to go with a straight fluorocarbon on your main line, uh, the Seaguar Invisix is a great option and it looks like they carry it here. So this is 200 yards of 10 pound for $23.99. Same thing with the Vanish. If you wanted to go with straight fluorocarbon, this also is not a bad option. Okay, so they don't have my favorite line, which is most of you know I rant and rave about Mason's Tea Line. I didn't expect them to have it. They're not as well known of a company, although I think they did develop the first monofilament in the United States. Um, they're, they're a very old USA made line company, but they aren't as well known in a lot of areas. So another great option that you can look for, it's gonna be Maxima in uh, Chameleon or Ultra Green. So let's see what they have here. Um, I was really hoping for 10 or 12 pound. I mean, I guess they have 12 pound here, but there's 660 yards, which I guess if you're gonna be there for a while, that's a good option um, because you might go through a lot of it, but it is kind of expensive. Um, but Maxima makes a very strong line that, I mean, we use all the time in Plasky. The only thing is when you're getting it this way, you are gonna have to hand line it on yourself as opposed to if you go to one of the shops in town like mine or someone else's, we do spool it on for you off of the bigger kegs. The other disadvantage is you have no idea how long this has been sitting here. I mean, going by how many of these are empty, I'm gonna say they're moving through this fairly quickly, but the stores in town are going through their line so quickly. It's fresh. I mean, we're ordering it in these big bulk kegs that are coming straight from the factory and you can just tell that it was made very recently and it's a lot stronger line. Whereas if you have something, um, again, it looks like this is moving fairly quickly, but if you try and buy a line that might be on sale or something, cause you think you're getting a good deal that's been sitting here a long time, you really don't know the integrity of it or you know um, how long it's been sitting there monofilament does have a shelf life and the main thing that you'll end up dealing with is a lot of line twist too if it's been sitting there coiled up for a while okay so as far as the rest of the stuff on the list I mean, we got through pretty much everything um i did try and look for a stringer i didn't find that they had anything that would stack up to the size of the fish that we're catching in Pulaski. so that might be something um, you could look for online. It's just going to be like a heavier duty rope stringer. You want a nine foot one, I would say, and nothing too thin that's going to bend out. If you had to in a pinch, honestly, you could use a thick piece of rope would be just fine. Just something that's like heavy enough that you can tie off. And then everything else on the list, um, pliers, line clippers, headlamp, you're looking that's i mean i know i could find that stuff in there that's pretty basic stuff so if not you could find it at any hardware store line clippers you could just use a pair of nail clippers if you had to um pliers you're looking for like six inch needle nose pliers something longer you don't want the stubby ended pliers you want the longer needle nose ones to really get in there to uh get the hooks out of the fish and also to crimp your split shot with um something you know with a good grip on it that you hopefully won't drop very easily then sunglasses you're looking for good polarized sunglasses but honestly 
as long as you get something on your eyes, even if it's just safety glasses, for me personally, I will not go near the water unless I have some sort of eye protection on, just because I have had split shot come back before, um, like I was snagged, and when the snag came undone, my split shot came back and hit me right in the glasses, and it cracked my glasses, but it probably saved my eye if I wouldn't have had any eyewear on. I do think that, you know, that would have been really bad, so just for me personally, having some sort of eyewear on is a must. I'm not saying, you know, that you absolutely have to or anything like that, but it, it is a rule that I do go by. So use your best judgment with that. And if you do decide to get um, sunglasses to wear, make sure that they're polarized to help you see in the water as well. All right, everyone. So I really hope you liked the video. I hope you found it helpful. Um, there's a lot of pros and cons to getting gear in other places. I mean, sometimes you're just really excited and you want to get your stuff ahead of time. So there are options out there. I would say not as great of ones. The advantage to waiting when you're in town is if you walk into a store like mine or some of the other stores in town, provided that they are helpful to you and make sure they point you in the right direction, is we carry products that are for that river. Everything in my store is for plast guy for the salmon river for catching these big fish so it really takes the guesswork out of it and then i mean some stuff um in other stores you know rods and reels say you could find it ten dollars cheaper there that's great and you certainly could do that but the river does break a lot of gear so just keep in mind if you do get stuff locally the stores in town will typically want to help you i mean i want to get you back out on the river as soon as possible so if you get something from my store and you break it i'm going to do everything you i can to to get you back out on the river and fishing whereas if you do buy it out of town you might have it right away but if you break it you're either done fishing for your trip or you're going to have to buy something locally anyway and then just return it when you get back um but i mean a lot of people do that it's you know, a risk to take, you might not break anything and you could get really good deals on stuff. So there's pros and cons to each, but I just wanted to show you that there are options out there. And if you do want to take the route, you know, say you're really excited and you want to try and get as much of your gear as you can ahead of time, you know, just those are some options to look out for um, in case you do do something like that. Uh, honestly, I was surprised by how much stuff they did have that would work. The one thing that I couldn't find at all was uh, a spin rod that I thought would work. I mean, they just didn't have anything. The rods in general, I think, would be like a little iffy to use on the river, but there were some okay options in the fly rods. The only compromise there would be they were more on the expensive side, where as if you were in town and you got, say, um, my favorite, which is a Maxon fly rod, those are going to run you a little over $100 and they're that's exactly what you need they're two-piece fly rods they're incredible and then if you do break it i'll help get you back on the river so just something to keep in mind i had a lot of fun making this video hopefully i'll be able to do this in some other parts of the country as i travel just to see what the options are um, this happened to be in denver colorado options for gear are going to change you know greatly they'll vary depending on where you are in the country what time of year it is and things so um keep your eye out and just you never know what you're gonna find and hopefully i'll be able to do more of these and see what else i can get thanks